Okay, so these gunnels, you've matched them and mortised them, and you check yeah, them out. We're going to leave them connected together, and we're going to lay the whole boat out All right. on the gunnels, as far as where the bracing's going to be. Okay. We're going to put the rider, uh, all our deck beam locations, mm -hmm. we're going to try them across, so then after we separate these gunnels and uh, put the tips on and spread them, all our corresponding lines will match up. When we put our cross pieces in, and we know right where we are throughout the whole stage of the process. So you do all that layout work now. For and the adjustable foot brakes. Yeah, for maximum versatility. Same amount of rocker that you had in the other boat was good. Fairly rounded cross section. We're going to have to cut almost two feet off the length of the Okay, so there's your deck beam. So we get that nice most maximum amount of space as possible so you can get in and out of the boat easily but still keep it comfortable and it'll still uh, have a really good leg brace on there. Okay. You know, the, good. Where the foot brace begins is at 49 inches and where his uh, top tip begins is 22 inches. Now we just have to determine the trim where we're going to place him in the boat and then we can put these measurements on these deck beams and what will correspond with that. It's three inches apart in what I call a basket where you're actually going to be sitting. Okay. Four inches apart, or five inches on the center, however you want to yeah. say it, and the rest of the hole. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So this is our bow. Okay. That's your stern, okay. Now the first thing I'm going to determine is the center. All right. Okay. It's really difficult to explain how you determine the trim of where you want to put the rider. And right. I make the big decision depending on the length of the bolt. Uh, yes. In this particular case, uh, being at 16 and a half, it's going to be a little bit shorter than normal, so I'm going to put the rider a little bit further forward uh, so that uh, the back of the keel doesn't get buried. We don't lift the boat up. When they're a little bit longer, you can put them further back because there's a lot more buoyancy in the, in the tail to make up for it. Correct, yeah, because of the length, yes. Because it's shorter, we won't have as quite as right. much volume as buoyancy, so we'll move it further Now, your taper is going to be um, pretty even, bow to stern. Right. Okay. That's as a major, yeah. The, the shape. It's Correct. Not a fish form. Right. That's a major factor to consider. We have to remember that the stern is a square, uh, is truncated, uh, so you get a lot more buoyancy back there. That, oh, yeah. That's why I believe they did that, uh, so they can put the rider further aft so the boat behaves a little bit better. And I, I always thought it was so they could get a push off the waves for surfing. It's a nice surface area. I think that too. I think the whole boat worked on a system, and, uh, and it had lots of Yep, and for the wake. 26 off of center. Well, actually, I went the steel. went for 25 inches. Okay. The person always felt the best as further back as possible. And they're well, yeah. done two different adjustments, and uh, they always stay in the further back adjustment. But so, you have the option. But you have the option. Uh, you'll probably have about three or four inches of throw where you'll be able to adjust your trim. And that's a lot, but I like the boat. Yeah, with that in mind, maybe I'll go back one more inch uh, to give you the proper range of adjustment. Yeah, that's good. It makes it just a little more flexible. Right. If you have a hard wind blowing on your belly, you might want to move a little bit further forward. Right, exactly. 
That that could be the margin between having uh, having to work awfully hard on just one side or having to just casually paddle straight, which is nice. Cut down a weather cocking problem. Yeah, two feet for the yeah for your so balance. So one sixteen and a half, one fourteen and a half, fourteen and a seven foot three. Okay. All right. That's our seven three. So we got plenty of meat on there. That didn't really work out very well with the the rig noise. So we got four deck beams on the bow. This deck is cut off. All right. Yeah, we're going to have seven deck beams total. Three in the stern. Variants, three toward the back and okay. four toward the front. All right. And we have them spaced evenly, depending on where our trim is and the length of the boat. Okay. So now everything's laid out. We have to cut the boat now to length. We're yes. going to add on the bow and stern, which will give us approximately two feet. All right. And, uh, and we can start putting our pieces on. Okay. Well, let's make these cuts now. I'm going to let you do those. Okay. And this is the uh, starn piece that has been lashed together. It will be pegged down the center in a minute. And this has got to go onto them. Yeah, we're going to attach the bow piece onto these gunnels. Okay. So we'll clamp them up uh, loosely and then we'll peg them. All right. And uh, do some lashings on them. Okay. That's the angle. Yes. Yeah. How far down are you going? Almost I halfway? I just took it down? to the tape. Okay. All right. Let's... So you start a straight. Good. Okay, so we leveled it horizontally, both the same way. Yeah. Our width, plus it'll start give it'll introduce some weight and start getting the gunnels used to having some shear in them. Right? Yes. Okay. So we got it all leveled. And we got our twenty one and a half inches beam. Okay, we'll do the tail. Okay. So we'll have a rounded stern on the top. Okay, so we'll have a lashing strap in this. Okay. I'll tie all this together. Okay. Then if you remember we have a key piece in here. Yes. We'll have a lashing in here that'll we'll drill right through the key piece in front of that pin. Okay. Actually, these pins go on that other angle, so we'll go on this side of the pin. Okay. All right. 
This is our deck beam being prepared, one of them. Red cedar. Oh, that's nice. Number two uh, ribs. <laughs> they just fall in just right. Okay, putting in the deck beam, it's third from the bow. And it's uh, going to be yellow cedar in this case. The previous ones were a mix. The one in the bow here is a piece of red cedar. Oh, nice. This is a router blade being used to create the rounded edges on each of the ribs. So each rib has four sides, and each side has two edges. Dipping the rib in some specially prepared fish oil to preserve it. Drilling through the gunnels into the end of the rib so that the pins, which are actually chopsticks, can be inserted and tapped in with a mallet. Now, if we were super thorough, we'd take a swab and dab some oil in those little... <laughs> yeah, they'd be impossible. Those wouldn't hold for a split second. Drilling some more holes for the dowels to be inserted into the end of each rib. This drilling is a little tricky because once you get through the gunnel, you're drilling into only end grain. Measuring where the lines are going to run and the scorps need to be cut into the gunnels for the lines that run from the ribs out around the gunnels to hold the ribs in place. Otherwise they would slide out. Here is Corey cutting the scorps in on the gunnels. After having drilled holes in the ribs, he is tying the ribs around through the scorp lines on the gunnels to hold the ribs in place. Okay. So that's an overhand. Now you go back through. You go from the top down through. Pull it out, tension it, and make sure it lines up precisely, just exactly over the scorp line on the gunnel. Then you pull it back down through nice and tight, and you tension it up 
as much as you can. Lay it exactly in that scorp line on the gunnel. And you go back up over the top, pull it down through so that these lashings lie just exactly where you want them to be with plenty of tension on them to hold the ribs into these gunnels that you can see Corey's hand is actually over them. Corey is using 100 pound test line and every time he goes around it multiplies the amount of pressure he's putting on the joint that he is securing in place. Now he's going back up from the bottom. Now he's got the knot in place just exactly where he wants it and he's cutting it off so that there is nothing to show on the skin surface. Here's a close-up of how this deck beam is tied into the gunnel. I can show you from this position just exactly how Corey is tying it in place and the knot he is using. It's an overhand and then he's taking the other end going back down through pulling it back up going around from the top and there you can see how he is planning and pulling pressure on this joint to make a good solid attachment uh, Corey is planning attaching the stringer okay. on the top of the deck beams. There's a slight angle on there in the stern section of that. Now Corey is planning the forward deck stringer. Now he's sawing to length the deck stringer and checking to see that it fits just right. That's got a nice soft taper. It's going to give that both a nice shape to the deck. Now Corey is planning the floorboards. That's what you see on the top that he's measuring up. And he's putting them in. Now we're looking at the deck stringer on the bow. From the bow deck stringer he's drilling and pegging in place the stern deck stringer. And he is clipping it off, then he's tapping it down and it's going to be sawn off and Corey's checking the alignment. Now he's going down the stern deck stringer drilling and pegging all the way along and then he's checking the alignment and doing some more drilling and pegging. The pegs are made out of bamboo chopsticks. The alignment is very important.
Thanks for watching my video, Gail Ferris.